want to go back once again to Vatican II with two pillars, a Giornamento and Resor Samon. A Giornamento, keeping the church up to date, renewing the church, Resor Samon, return to the sources. Vatican II wanted us to go back to the sources. The sources meaning there is only one single deposit of faith, the Word of God, in tradition and scriptures. Please take note, Vatican II took great strides to put tradition before scriptures, not scripture and tradition. That was a big shift from the Ephelius of Vatican I to the Verbo of Vatican II. <coughs> sacred tradition and sacred scripture. Why? Because it was tradition that wrote scriptures. One single deposit of faith, because for us in catechesis, the single deposit of faith continues to challenge us to do what? Sentire cum ecclesia. To think with the church. And to think with the church means our fidelity to the source. In today's input, we shall be listening to four inputs. We have been regarded as always being faithful to the teachings of the church. This morning, there will be two inputs. The first input is going back once again to sacred scriptures. But it is not a standalone sacred scripture. Rather, the single deposit of faith is the word. Second, after our speaker, will be the shift in terms of doctrinal understanding of the word doctrine. And this afternoon will be liturgy and morality. I see to it that the shifting are expressed well because the shifting continues to challenge us. Please take note, the speakers cannot exhaust all. It's impossible for one hour, even for an hour and a half, as you experienced yesterday. Uh, Father Al Albert told me he wanted to give more, but because of the time constraints, he could not give it. But consider this input and this afternoon as a part of the continuum that all of us hopefully will undergo in the next few years. For us to understand the development of doctrine. Take note, Henry Cardinal Newman wrote a very important theological uh, input known as the development of doctrine. There is one very important principle in the teaching of theology, and that is, it is not an end-all, stand-all, in terms of doctrinal understanding. Doctrine, because it is organic, continues to grow and develop, but the substance remains the same. But in the optic of the new evangelization, this content must be understood from the point of view of new methods, new expressions, and new ardor. To begin our input this morning, dear colleagues, I'd like to present to you a person who is not a stranger to all of us. That is why I don't need, I did not ask for their curriculum detail because their face says, sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> so, without further ado, our first resource person on scripture is the Executive Secretary of the Episcopal Commission of the Biblical Apostolate, Dr. Nandi Pagate. Let us go.
Good morning, partners in the world. Okay, so my face sounds familiar. <laughs> so do your faces. Thank you very much, Monsieur, for inviting me to this gathering. For your information, I registered as a participant. And then my registration fee was returned because you're going to do something. You're going to do a job. Okay. And then I registered also for the youth camp in Iloilo to be a participant, to be an observer, because we're supposed to be partners and working together. And when Sister Alecta saw my name, no, you're coming here to talk. Will I ever stop talking? <laughs> anyway, when I saw the topic, paradigm shift in scripture, I said, paradigm shift in scripture? The scripture is all about paradigm shift. Because all of us are born within a culture, we are born within a way of thinking, we have uh, people who influence us and so on and so forth. So as we grow older and older, wiser and wiser hopefully, and more beautiful, we uh, are caught up sometimes in that uh, world of um, paradigms. So we enter into the Catholic Church, we become members of a church, and we are molded into the paradigm of the church, or paradigms of the church. So we have to make some shifts in terms of um, paradigms. When I saw the uh, time given to uh, Father yesterday, I said, two and a half hours. I'm given only one hour. So my indulgences, Monsignor, I have the shots because I'm the speaker. So given the objective of this gathering, namely to engage in a friendly exchange with theological experts in the areas of scriptures, doctrine, morality, and liturgy, so as to be updated in the sources, content of catechesis. This means to say that our purpose here is to be updated in the sources, content of catechesis. And so I'm going to be simple, given the audience, the time constraint, and also uh, the topic. So, paradigm shift in scripture. Um, my topic will be about what is a paradigm, what is paradigm shift, why do we need paradigm shifts in catechesis and religious education, and how and what are necessary paradigm shifts in teaching scripture. So if I miss anything anymore, Senor, we will have to have another seminar. Another seminar which will have to last for one day. I am not used to giving uh, the good things that, um, that are historical in nature because I observe that people sleep and I want to be awake. <laughs> so I'd like to deal with things that are really operative in the here and now that are very, very relevant for us in catechesis as well as religious education. And I'll try to be as simple as possible so that we can integrate it in our methodologies as well as in the content. Because you're talking here about content in catechesis. Okay. So, when we speak of paradigm, we know, we all know already that it was Thomas Kuhn in a book which came out in 1962, we who popularized the word paradigm in his book, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. A paradigm signifies an implicit or explicit set of rules that molds a person's perspectives, affects the way he sees and shapes his view of the world. A paradigm is a way of thinking, is a way of looking at things, is a way of looking at um, anything in the world which influences your way of thinking, it influences your behavior, it influences your lifestyle, it influences everything including your uh, way of relating with yourself and way of relating with others. So, a paradigm shift would of course mean a change in the basic assumptions within the ruling theory of science. I am here the basic uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the assumptions that have been uh, given by uh, scholars of the past and the way they interpreted scripture and so on, but I think that should have been in an earlier, uh, in an earlier seminar because
because we are already confronted with so many things which need our attention with regards to paradigms and paradigm shifts. So I'll deal with that. So, yeah. Why do we need paradigms? Why do we need paradigm shifts? There are so many things that are happening today. And one of the things is here, oh, the loss, the lease, those are not in the, uh, in the lease. Many are leaving the church. That is one of the reasons why we had this plenary, we had this synod on uh, the word of God. Because the Pope, Pope Benedict the 16th, our, uh, yeah, Pope Emeritus, thank you. So our Pope Emeritus said, how come, and it was um, conveyed to me by our chairman, um, Bishop Ambo, the Pope asked him, how come there is an exodus from the Catholic Church to the born again, especially to the Pentecostals? That is when they came together in 2008 to come up with the uh, answers. Bakit ganito ang nangyayari sa mundo ngayon? Once upon a time, we were, we were very many. Now there's an exodus. How come? And they came up with two uh, answers. Namely, first, the knowledge or the, the, the focus on scripture. You know, uh, in the other groups, our brothers and sisters, whenever you are sick or whenever you are confronted with a problem, they come up with a scriptural text. hospital. Siyempre, sari-sari mga bisita ko, may mga katoliko, may mga born again, may mga medotista. So when our friends from the other groups come, they would say, ah, tinga, pagdasan natin yung paho. Kasi namaga po ang paho eh. Uh, I had this happy to focus our views and I almost died. So, um, I was telling the Lord, sige na, take me na, kasi it's too painful, take me na, take me na. Pero hindi na take me naman. <laughs> Uh, they said, uh, I would, if I would have been late for seven hours, I would have been dead. And then I was reviewing my life. Pwede na, pwede na, Lord. Sige, take me na, take me na. Hindi, pwede na ko namatay. Tapos, nung ano, minsan, nag-eroplano ako papuntang ano, sa buwangga. Kasama ko maraming ano, maraming muslim. Tapos, sa ganyan-ganyan kong eroplano. Sabi ko, yung mga kasama ko, eh, siya na lala, eh, siya na lala. Sabi niya, ako, 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 yung cross ko, not yet, Lord, not yet, not yet. Not this way, not this way, Lord. Okay, yeah. Tapos nung nag-stay ko na yung Lord, sabi ko, di ba sinabi mo okay na? Pwede ka nang puni ni Lord? Bakit dali ka nang reaction mo? Sabi, di ba wala? Di ba wala ako ready? No? So when my when visitors from the other groups come, oh, they pray. When my visitors from the Catholic uh, group come, oh, they're very happy. Oh, sige, kainin mo to. At ako, di ba kung kainin mo? At dami namin nila instruction. At saka, oh, bigyan na naman ang hawak mo. Huwag po na yan. Ang saya-saya namin. And then, babaya, alis na sila. O ito ang trabili, yun ito, tama. Kaya, unahin mo ngayon, ito, mga, tapos alis na sila. Pero you know, my room, my friends from the other groups, they never live without prayer. They never live without the biblical text to read to me. No? Uh, to read to me in relation with the part of my body that is sick. But I noticed that they only read one. There are different groups that they only read one, ganun pala. Minememorize nila, isa lang pala, pare-pare ko sila, from the book of James. But I don't comment, I just... Ang ganda-ganda, the feeling of being prayed over. I was sick in hospital, I will not mention where. And then I said, is there no communion to be given every day? Ah, okay, we will give you communion. And the person who comes to give communion, by the Christ. Amen. And then he lives. By the Christ. Ano ba yan? Sabi kong gano'n, is that not a sacrament which is supposed to uh, help you, enlighten you, give you hope, and give you consolation that at a time of sickness, at a time of need, that uh, uh, the Lord is there to help you and to be a consolation to you? Sabi ko, tayo ba't may mangyari dito? No? So, dami confusions, and dami yung adults live in the church. What else? No? We have several paradigms of the world that is now put vis-a-vis -vis the paradigms of the world. So, there are so many uh, idiosyncrasies, ways of thinking, ways of living that is offered by the world. And it is challenged by the <coughs> paradigm of the world. And vice versa. The paradigms of the world are now challenging, uh, challenged, challenged rather, by the paradigms of the world. And even us, sometimes we are confused. What is it not talaga? I saw many times on the internet, is Jesus really a historical figure or is he a myth? 
And then there was once where someone uh, from the religious group said, wala ka palang, wala ka palang limbo. And then maraming nagulakog dahil wala nang limbo. No? So there are paradigms that shape our world. There are paradigms of, of which we are so used to that when it is shaken, our whole world is also shaken. Bakit ganun? No? So, we have this encyclical by St. John Paul II which describes a situation. The first two options were entire groups of baptized, of the baptized have lost a living sense of the faith or even no longer consider themselves members of the church and live a life far removed from, the, from Christ and his gospel. In this case, what is needed is a new evangelization or a re-evangelization. So we all know that we have been founded and founded on this evangelization and then new evangelization and then re-evangelization. And then it is said that because there are people who are sacramentalized but not evangelized. So ang dami dami pumaspasok na idiosyncrasies, mga ano, uh, pagbabago na kailangan nating um, i-straighten, kailangan nating uh, i-define, kailangan nating kailangan maging klaro, lalo-lalo na sa atin ng mga religious educators at saka katikista. Kasi kung ikaw ay isang hilo na teacher, syempre hinihilo mo din yung mga, mga estudyante mo. Kung it, it the blind, they say, cannot, uh, ano, it is the blind, you will fall down by the by the precipice before you know it, no? So, because of this, we need new paradigms. Also because, you know, we have, we have things every year. We have the year of the faith, we have the new evangelization, we have, we have the year of the lady. We are told to be, to be brave, how are we going to be brave, no? And then we have the Verbum Domini by our uh, Pope Emeritus in 2010 and then we have the joy of the gospel and yesterday we uh, we had the new evangelization and yesterday we had a good dose of laudato si ano ang sinasabi ng lahat ng ito paano pupunta papasok ang lahat ng ito sa sinasabi ni father kahapon na dapat habihin ang mga ito dapat we have to be able to put them in one nutshell we have to be able to link them with one another so that we'll be able to convey them in the way they should be conveyed so ano ngayon all christian people must make a fundamental paradigm choice dahil sa dami dami ng mga uh, paradigms na ito lahat tayo kailangan pumili ng isang paradigm the decision between what is and what seems to be in the eternal and the temporal shift from a cultural way of saying life to a biblical way of saying life i said earlier that the bible especially the new testament is a paradigm shift an invitation to a paradigm shift of course you know that especially in the gospel of matthew you have there the mm, teachings of jesus with regards to paradigm shifts it has been said do not commit adultery now, paradigm shift. But now I tell you, any man who looks, any man who looks at a woman with evil intentions in his mind has already committed adultery. So yun pa lang ha, tinitignan mo pa lang. Wala ka namang sinasabi. Tinitignan mo pa lang, pero yung eternal disposition mo, meron pa lang sinasabi. Pero ngayon, pwede natin paliktarin. Any woman who looks at a man, no? <laughs> sa Matthew, ay ng evangelist rather, sa Matthew 6, sabi niya the different signs of piety we have prayer, we have almsgiving, and we have fasting, those are the signs of prayer during that time, but Jesus said, well, if you pray, do like this so, look at them, they stand at the street corners and everybody who sees them wow, he's praying, oh, it's a very big rosary, there were no rosaries at that time <laughs> 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 Reward. And he's repeating, of course, he's saying, Jesus said it. And he says, you have already received the word. When you pray, you pray in secret. And the one, the Father who sees you will reward you. When you give alms, do not even let your left hand know. It's not possible. Do not even let, uh, let your left hand know or your right hand know what your left hand is doing or what your right hand is doing. 
We have to find out what is really the meaning of that in the context of that time and try to find out how is this now operative, how is this to be taught in the context of our time. So we know that when you say right hand, that is uh, very, very important. So I asked my teacher, actually, my Bible teacher, by the way, if uh, Father yesterday armed himself with the book, now that was the, I arm myself also with verbum domini, but I'm not saying. <laughs> This is uh, imported from China because it's less expensive there. Yeah, I will be quoting from these two books because our paradigm shifts should come from a, a very recent, it's still uh, no, very hard with us, no? So uh, when we look at the cases of religious education, we should um, uh, keep in mind this, um, these things here. And then I continue with my paradigm shifts. Uh, no. Sabi niya de, when you give arms, don't even let, uh, let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Do not even let your best friend know what you are doing. You don't put the name of a congressman so and so, uh, donated all the pews that is in this church, and this church is donated by that and that. Because you have already re uh, received your reward. So Jesus is always pointing out on something internal rather than something that is external. Because uh, we can be very externally pious, but what is happening within us, if something comes from within, then it must be genuine. But if it is only external, then it might not be, you know, like the apostles in Matthew 28, it says that all authorities, uh, they went to Galilee, and they all bowed down. But they all worship him, uh, the word is worship. They all worship him, but some doubted. So you may be worshiping, but you're doubting pala, no? So even in the, at the end of the, of the gospel, some of the 28, some, some of them uh, doubted. By the way, that is not what we're going to uh, deal with. But I'm just pointing out the paradigm shifts, the invitations to have paradigm shifts that are contained in the gospel of Matthew. And as you read on, there are more and more and more. Like for example, oh, when we speak of paradigm, cultural paradigm shift. Culture, Filipino. Pag may sakit na glob ka sa isa. Sabi mo sa isa. Alam mo, sasabi mo po sa kanya. Bakit naman? Eh di nangyong goy ka siya. Ay, ah, nangyong goy ka lang. Natural ka pa. Oh, nangyong. So, you talk to him. Now, you read uh, Matthew 18. It says there, when you have something against somebody, you go first to that person. That is not our culture. You don't go, you don't go straight to the person. Because of fear. What else? Uh, your ashing or whatever. So you, you talk to another person. But in the in the gospel it says go first to that person and then go to if that person does not listen, then you invite another person to go with you or two persons or you go to the church. You exhaust all possible ways and means to be reconciled with that person or to settle that to settle that uh, difficulty with that person. That's also a paradigm shift from what you used to do and what the gospel is challenging you to, uh, to do. There is a pastor who is very, very good in counseling, and he's counseling several couples with, with heartaches and headaches and, you know, uh, fatalities because of their relationships. And of course, I would thank you, Lord, for sparing me from that kind of uh, <laughs> The wedding ring and suffering. <laughs> because suffering is an inherent part of getting married, but so is a living life, right? We also have all our challenges, as we heard in the in the homily this morning. But I mean to say, each one has its own way of following the Lord. Each one has its own way of expressing this discipleship to the Lord, uh, and have has to contend with the challenges that go with that particular choice. Kasi may paradigm ka nga eh. Tapos ano ba ang ano? Uh, gagawin mo para you can live your life to the best of your ability. So, our paradigms are noted, to be noted in relation to scripture. Burbung Domini number 74, dito po. 
an important aspect of Dr. Jesus pastoral work, which, if used wisely, can help in rediscovering the centrality of God's word, is catechesis. Oh. Si Pope Benedict at saka yung lahat ng mga nagatid ng sinod na yun ang nagsasabi nito. Which in its various forms and levels must constantly accompany the journey of the people of God. We remember here the model for catechesis often mentioned by different scholars and catechists as well. Luke 24, 13 to 35. What is that story all about? And they use, okay? The story, very good sister. Uh, the story of the disciples on the road to Emmaus. Because of their encounter of Jesus as a person, they change. No? They change as human beings. They change as persons. They did not continue on their journey. They went back to Jerusalem. Di ba? Nagbago sila. At ang ginamit ng word dito sa ano, verbum domain is the word encounter. Encounter. I emphasize that because there has to be a shift with regard to what, how do we teach now and how do we, how we do catechesis and religious education. Sometimes there are things that bar us or that restrain us from affecting that encounter between Jesus and the students. Uh, I was when I, when this uh, word about encounter has been founded and founded, I went back to my to my experiences and I said, when did I encounter Jesus? And then I came to the realization, oh, I encountered Jesus through my Bible teacher. My Bible teacher, who to me was so genuine, was so authentic. Oh, I went to him because I had problems, and he listened to me. Who am I who comes from Mount Timbuktu? And who is he who is a scholar and who, who has gone to all uh, schools in the world to study and listening to me? Who just who comes from the mountains and was nothing to tell me except my, the sorrowful mysteries of my, of my life? Nakinig siya talaga, kahit na-scholar siya, kahit na saan-saan siya nag-aaral, talagang natouch ako doon. Tapos I went, I went on testing him. Sabi ko, may wala ka dyan. Pag-alino yan, hindi niya ano yan. So, sabi na, it's okay natin. You can, you can call me anytime. The naughty in me, kasi my name is naughty, but sometimes I'm naughty. So sabi ko, sige nga, i-testing ko nga ito. Ang totoo yung sinasabi niya, hilay na ng clock, nag-ano ako sa kanya, tumawag na ako. Sabi ko, where do you find the story of Martha and Mary? Hindi siya nagalit. Alam mo, ginising ko siya, pero hindi siya nagalit. Sabi niya, naughty, naughty. Wow, para ako si Martha. Martha, Martha. Diba? Naughty, naughty. Don't you remember it is in Luke 10? 36 to 40. Ah, thank you, thank you very much. Ganyan. Hmm. Another time, nalit ako sa klase niya. Usually, pag madre ang nalilit, sister, you'll give it a sister. Ako sa doon. Hindi spot siya. Ako, talagang sinadya ako nalit. Sabi niya, nati, nati, you might be late for your funeral. <laughs> <laughs> yung gentleness ba niya, at saka yung fearness niya talaga, in guiding, guiding me as his protege, talagang nakatouch sa akin, sabi ko. Eh, oo, yung, yung human touch. I tell you, I have been teaching for 43 years and the students will forget everything that you have been bumbling that in class, blah, 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 blah. But they will not forget that once upon a time, when she had headache, you reach out to her and said, may headache kaya ka, umuwi na na muna. Those are the things that they remember. And the things that you repeat, of course, from scripture, that touch the heart rather than the things that touch the mind. Because the things from the mind causes debate. At debate kayo talaga. But the things that touches the heart, ay hindi, magpapaluha ka, magpapatungiti ka. Ay talagang kahit naglalakad kang mag-isa, tumatawa kang mag-isa. Eh, di ba rin kung sinasabi ni ikaw ay lukaluka? Basta ikaw ay masaya. <laughs> You know, I am just saying there is one thing that we have forgotten, I think, in uh, in the academy. We have become too cerebral, we have become too academic that we forget what is being mentioned here in Verbum Domini, the word encounter. Okay? But first, let us go to when we say the centrality of catechesis is the word of God, there are now nuances or there are explanations on the different meanings of the word of God. This is from the lecture of uh, Pope, uh, I hope, Bishop Pavilio. So, the Logos refers in the first place to the eternal word, of course, to Jesus Christ. 
That is why it says that incarnation, carne, he became man, right? Begotten of the Father before all ages and for the substantial in him, the word was with God and the word was God. It is here in number, verbum domini, seven, right? Now, the other meaning of word of God, it also means voice of creation and we had a good dose of that yesterday. God said, let there be light and there was light. And if uh, it was the word of God that brought about the light, that brought about everything in this world, then voice of creation is the voice of God. And therefore, destruction of creation is destruction of the word of God. When we abuse creation, we are abusing the word of God. When we are misusing creation, we are misusing the word of God. And when we speak about formation, formation in the word of God includes formation in our attitudes, formations in our way of life, formations in the way we conduct our lives. I was grade two when my father brought me to here to Good Shepherd. Mga anak ng mga ano, walang nani, walang takte, betakto nila na dito. Sabi niya, para mga form ka. You're very naughty. So, doon talaga, we live by the bed. Kering, 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 and you wake up. And they changed my name because somebody was named Nakvita. So they changed my name to Lucia. So, I said, to wait for the corner. Let us pray. Pray again. Then I, I crawl under my bed. And then the sister would look at, where is Lucia? And then I come out on the other side <laughs> of the bed. And that thing's like that. But the formation means to say, you have to be honed with regards to your character and ways of thinking. Kailangan maligo kami araw-araw. Eh, dito ang nalang nilalagay. Eh, mga kasama ko, hindi naliligo. Nilalagay ang mga pangalan doon. Ah, kailangan this day, ito ang maliligo, ito ang naligo. Pag naligo ako ng upa, dati nitin ako, naku, hindi pabasa. Naku, kawawa naman ang mga classmates ko. Sila na naman ay makakamay school ng anang sister. So, maligo ako sa isa, transfer ako sa next. Maligo ako sa next. So, I was saying that most of Cardinal Tagle when he was saying was for creation, you know, in that beginning mass. So I was texted by somebody. Hindi ko mapupunta si Cardinal Tagle ang magbisa. Nako, nagdadanda na mo bilin niya. Sabi niya, we have lost one thing, and that thing is contemplation. Sabi niya, we have to contemplate. When we eat, we contemplate. We have to think, where did that come from? Saan galing yung bigas na yan? How many hands did it take before? Nandun yung ano? Tapos, siyempre, tumawa siya. Ngayon yung mata niya. Nandipiro ba ito? Hindi. Then, naging seryoso siya. I'm serious, sabi niya. So you, husbands and wives, sabi niya. When you go home, you tell your husband, sit down there, and I will contemplate. Kasi tapos, Why? Oh, yun. Balik-balikan mo. Go back to the fervor of, you know, of love. The love relationship that you had before. The same is to with creation. Putaan mo yung langgam. Langgam doon, ay hindi yung langgam doon. Langgam doon. Ha? not to depreciate uh, nature. And one of the things that Father rightly pointed out yesterday is misinterpretation of scripture. When we said, for example, we are masters of creation, our paradigm of master is to control, to have dominion over and above. It is not the idea of uh, stewardship. But now we are told, the idea there is to help in creation because the, the more you destroy creation, the more we are destroyed. I was interviewed about the end of the world. Is it true that the the uh, what is it? Um, uh, the planets will have found nature against each other? <laughs>
death because human beings will destroy themselves. We're going to destroy us. It's alright to say that. Tayo naman mismo ang sumisira sa ating sarili. Tayo ang sumisira sa ating katawan. Tayo ang sumisira sa mundo. At alam nyo naman ang mundo, pag sinira mo, if you destroy nature, nature will will hit back to you. And you have no other way but to you know, adhere to the way nature has mm, hit back to us. And that is why very practical yung mga examples ni Father Kahapon. How do we teach our students so that they will be attuned with what we call it, the Word of God, which is also found in the voice of creation. We have been, we are a throwaway culture. We want everything to be easy, easy, and then we throw away. Why? Because what the, we want to be uh, progressive guru. And progressive is uh, measured in terms of money, money, money. And you go to the gospel and what does God, uh, what does Jesus tell against money? You cannot serve two masters. You will either hate one or love the other. You cannot love them both at the same time. One has to be over the other. You know, paradigm shift. Oh. Yesterday I was listening to a group of people over at the Veritas. They were so happy. They said, you know, I give up what in the sun. I love you in the sun. You can receive 100,000 pesos a month and more. Kasi ikaw ang head, ikaw pa yung uh, umupo ka pa sa thesis hindi. Meron ka pang ano, uh, research. Research, research, research. Kahit walang bumabasa, basta may research ka. Bye. <laughs>
So, ito yung legacy natin. That is the word of God. And now, our conscience. Our conscience. I come from Ipugao, as you all know already, because it's all written in my face. <laughs> But we have to 
believe that our conscience, we have to hone our conscience, we have to educate our conscience. Para hindi naman maging lax conscience or erratic conscience. Okay. His spirit invites us to paradigms and paradigm shifts. Maraming paradigms ang nandito sa Biblia kung babasahin ninyo. Eh syempre kung marami kayong Bible at ibang bahay, dami-daming Bible, hindi naman binabasa. Mm. May pumunta sa bahay sa akin. Mother, tuturo ka doon ng Biblia. Sabi ko, bakit? Pwede bang makibit-debate sa iyo? Sabi ko, Holy Spirit, sabi mo ka sa akin, paano palalayasin ang mga ito? Kasi the Bible was not written for debate. The Bible was written out of faith for people with faith. So it has to be understood in the light of faith also. So sabi, sabi ko, ah, nakasama ninyo ang Genesis to Revelation? Ay, hindi po ma. Ay, pakikipag-debate lang ako sa mga nagbasa ng Genesis. <laughs> And it invites you to another paradigm, especially the paradigm of Jesus. Jesus is the center, as mentioned already, and it is there in our 